August 1947. Madras Presidency, Tamil Nadu. A group of people were preparing for the trip of their lifetime. They had been called to carry out an important mission to sanctify and legitimize the transfer of power from one ruler to another. Where were these people going? Delhi. India was getting ready for its freedom to be rid of the British rulers. After decades of people fighting for self-rule, thousands arrested, killed in action, chasing one goal, Asati, freedom. The last Viceroy, Lord Mountbatten, had a task to complete, to hand over power to the Indians. He had a simple query. How should this moment of handover be conducted? A handshake would hardly do. What is the symbolism that should be adopted for the moment? He posed this question to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. A good question. Something that needed thought. A puzzled Nehru turned to the veteran freedom fighter, Shri C. Raja Gopalachari. Rajaji, as he was popularly known, was from Tamil Nadu. Nehru respected Rajaji's erudition and knowledge of Indic customs and civilization. Well-read as he was, he found the answer in India's past. In the Chola kingdom of Tamil Nadu, one of India's oldest and longest continuous reigns. The transfer of power from one Chola king to another was marked by the passing of the Sengol the staff of righteousness blessed by the high priest of the time invoking the blessings of Lord Shiva the Cholas being his ardent devotees worship continues in their thousand year old temples to this day Rajaji recommended that a similar ceremony and symbolism be followed Nehru accepted this Rajaji wasted no time in contacting the leading dharmic mat or monastery, the Tiruva Vaduturai Adinam, established over five centuries prior, located in the heart of Chola land, functioning to this day. The then 20th Guru Maha Sannidhanam, Srila Sri Ambalavana Desika Swami, who was ailing at the time, accepted the task. He commissioned the making of the Sengol with famous jewelers, Ummidi Bangaru, in Madras. On top of the Sengol was Nandi, symbolizing strength, truth, and righteousness. Recalling the making of the Sengol, 96 year old Sri Bhumidi Itti Rajalu. <laughs> Drawings are like that. It was a round thing with a long pole. It was a save and dear. It is not a period of the Buddha. Jagardia Sayono, Nala Sayono. Then give the order. It was made of silver with gold coating. I was very happy to be associated with the making it. Are the people super easy? The Holy Seer directed his deputy, Srila Sri Kumaraswami Tambiran, the Adinam's Oduvar, special singer, Manikam, and Nadaswara Vidwan T. N. Rajaratinam Pillai to conduct the proceedings. The delegation was flown to Delhi on a special flight. On the night of August 14, 1947, Srila Sri Kumaraswami Tambiran gave the Sengol to Lord Mountbatten. Who 
handed it back to him. The Sengol was purified with holy water. It was taken in procession to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The Oduwar sang verses from the Kollara Padigam, hymns from the Tevaram, composed by the Tamil saint Tiranyana Sambandar. The sannyasi wrapped Nehru in the Pitambaram and handed over the Sengol. The verse ended with the words Adi Argal Vanil Arasalvar Anai Namade meaning it is our order that the follower of the Lord, the King, shall rule as in the heavens. Thus the transfer of power to rule the nation happened with a symbol as per civilization practice from a thousand years ago in a remarkable integration of the South and the North, commemorating the birth of the nation as one. Nehru accepted the Sengol in the presence of Sri Rajendra Prasad, who later became the first president of India. This event was reported in local and international media. Time magazine of 25th August 1947 carried the report. Pandit Nehru thereafter went on to deliver his famous address at the midnight hour of August 14, 1947.